Hello. <laughs> Every time I come to vlog her, she's okay. like, I look tired. This, that, blah, blah. I've not shown you. I've shown you from afar. In, yeah, this is okay, me showing you. <laughs> you do actually look really yeah, nice because your face is tanned. This is the best part. I don't know how my face is tanned. I try to avoid the sun. What are these two doing? <laughs> Taking a hit. We're just sat out enjoying the sunset. It's almost 7 p.m. The garden looks beautiful. Let me show you guys. Do do do. And we're having a barbecue. We're having a barbecue and just gonna enjoy this Sunday. I'm, I'm really hungry, but like I can't focus until I'm fed. So yeah, just gonna sit and enjoy this weather. Sign and I also went for a walk, which was really nice. I got myself a gift, which I will show you guys. I'll do what a little you unboxing. Get? You'll see. Oh, you me. Yeah. I feel like I, I still need to do something just so I could buy myself a gift. <laughs> Honestly. That's very really nice. You have Honestly, to do it. I need to like. Yes, and I have to do as well. Yeah. I yes. need to do something so I can I'm buy, buy for myself two. Two gifts. No, two. Two. What's two? A tour. A tour. A tour. Oh, a tour. A tour of what? What do you mean a tour? <laughs> tour of Arus, my No, a tour to different countries. Yes, a tour. Ticket, yes. In the UK, in English, we no, say. No, I don't want for England. No, I'm saying in English, we say tour. tour. In Iran, we say tour. Yes, but. That's why you're confusing. Oh, because yes, even. Even tour is like tour arus. Yeah. It's like what no, we call I the. I had my What's a tour arus in avail? Uh, <laughs> See, yeah. I can't. I can't get my Farsi right. I can't get my English right. And yet you're still trying to teach. <laughs> the audacity! I actually just graduated from Harvard for my teaching. Harvard graduate. <laughs> Technically, I went. <laughs> I'm gonna steal that meme because I did go to your Harvard graduation. <laughs> <laughs> so far, literally <laughs> hiding oh la la, look at this food Guys, this is definitely nicer than the takeaway we bought yesterday yeah. What takeaway did you guys get yesterday? Not as good as this Grand, Grand I, I did, I did Other one Hey vlog Long time to see. I'm with Sol. Hello, guys. Guys, do you want to know why you're tilted at this angle? Because beneath you is the entire mess that is my bedroom. You don't want to see. You don't want to see it. We don't want to see it. We're not looking. I'm at gonna it. come back and organize this, or I'm gonna organize it tomorrow. To be honest, tomorrow. you've done so well today. Yeah, you know? so much organizing and stuff in the house. So let me off on this one. Anyway, we're gonna go for some Persian food today. It just makes me laugh because you literally had to push something away yeah, with your foot. Yeah, just so I can get behind you. <laughs> it's all packages, guys. I essentially need to sort through my packages. I have a bunch of stuff I need to return and. Think Things that I want to keep so I need to work through them anyway we're gonna go eat some food we're gonna take the dog with us we're going to quiche the gentleman on the phone said they are dog, dog friendly. friendly so we're gonna take Banksy with us um, and just enjoy our Sunday I feel like I haven't done a chilled vlog in ages where we just sit and chat with you guys as well and I Catch up on life. Catch up on life, yeah. So I'm gonna answer some questions as well in this vlog, just on what I've been up to and maybe having a chit chat with Sol. Mm, so I look forward to it. Teko nacho. Teko nacho. Teko nacho. Is anyone else's dog this excited whenever they want to go out? I mean, every dog. This is what we're wearing. I'm wearing a very old Zara top and new Zara jeans, Bottega sunglasses, hair clip, and very old, very old boots. And I'm wearing this white top. I don't know where from. Jeans. It's actually cool. very nice. This top. Thank you. Jeans from Sebi's cupboard. They're old Zara. And Reebok Victoria Beckham trainers. Very cool. Thank you. Salt your abs. I just can't. Stop it. You are a cool girl. Hello. 
we're at Quiche. This is my, as of recent, new favorite Iranian restaurant. Yeah, the service is amazing, guys. Um, to sit I'm not and eat in. Food. My takeout favorite is somewhere else. Mm. My takeout favorite is different to your takeout favorite. Yeah, that's true. But that's because I'm a Georgia girl. She is a Mahayan Kubida girl. Which they call Mumtaz in some places. Sultani in some. Sultani in some. So I just say That's the moment. I like that's Chenja it. more than I like bag. Because I am the daughter of Farshad. <laughs> My dad loves Chenja, guys. If it was up to him, he would have Fila Kabul every, every day. day. Every day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. I think he has. There was a period where he did. There was a period when we were, I think, in Iran and he was here alone. And he How do you feel about, sorry to cut you up, how do you feel about grilled fish in an Iranian restaurant? I don't love it. I'm mm. not here for it. I prefer to have meat. Yeah. And I'm not like I love chicken wings, but I'm not too on. I don't like. Either. I don't really love chicken wings, so I don't like touching the meat with my. I don't like touching things with my hand. I know yeah. it's weird. No, it's not. Anyway, I don't like feet. <laughs> <laughs> there was no logic to that. Well, I don't like feet touching me. Like. Yeah. So long story short, I ordered a Georgia Bedouin Sahon with Dersh Polo and so got bag of kubida. And we got starter, and it's a but no. I'll show you. Oh guys, I love that the bread's got so much sesame seeds on it. Mmm, so exciting. Mmm, it's so good. Mmm, it's so good. Yes, that was so good. I feel like we did really well. <laughs> we did really well. <laughs> Saying that, the old me would have probably finished all of this. Same. I mean, I've only got one piece of Georgia. <laughs> yeah, but I had some of your Yeah, but I had some of your kebab. You didn't have any bag. You had like... I, I had that much bag. Girl. I had that much kubida. You had a Georgia. I had the rest of the Georgia. They forgot your zillage. It's okay, we'll forgive them because the food was good. The rice is beautiful. Be like, beautiful. Literally. Like, look, dun dun it. Like, they're separated, they're really long, it's nice. The Georgia kebab was banging, the kebab was so good. The kubida was really nice. I feel like that's a tell of a good Iranian restaurant when the kubida is nice and it's not filled with bicarbonate. So. And their bread was insane. Yes. So I thought I would do my makeup and answer some of your questions. I put a question box on Instagram and um, I'm just going to catch up with you guys because I feel like I've been filming so much travel content and vlogs that I haven't really, I've been kind of hiding behind them. I haven't really had a chance to sit down with you guys and just chat about everything that's been going on. So let's do that. Sorry, I'm just like unpacking my makeup bag as I speak because I am in my living room. Um, by the way, this is my favorite go to tried and tested it's the it cosmetics cc cream and i've been on this hooked on this for two years and i use the shade medium tan um so where have i been and what i've been up to this past year i would say for sure this year has been probably like one of the most transformative in my life I have started my training and at the end of my first year of training as an obs and gynae surgeon for those of you who don't know, didn't know, haven't watched me in a while or it's your first time here and um, in the UK it's a seven year program and yeah I just finished my first year and honestly I'm not lying when I tell you it's probably been the most fulfilling happiest year of my life like in terms of career, academics, like I can't even tell you how many times I've been sat at work or I've been like mid-operation or procedure or whatever and I'm like can you believe that this is your job like you get paid to do this and my heart kind of sinks like I'm on a roller coaster and my eyes well up with tears and then I need to kind of remind myself that I'm at work and I need to be professional and not just like break down in tears of happiness but it feels so surreal and incredible that I almost can't believe it's true like I feel like I'm in the middle of a manifestation tape and I can't believe that I'm so blessed to say that that's my job and my life and that I get to do this forever loads of people I work with tell me oh this is just you know new job bliss and that it will pass but 
I know loads of people who do my job and they enjoy it, but they just don't love it the way that I do, guys. Like, I literally love my job. I love everyone that I work with so much. The thought of the fact that I need to move hospitals, because, like, essentially every year you have to change hospitals within your deanery. So I've been accepted into the North central and east london deanery that's a group of 10 hospitals and every year you need to move hospitals one north hospital one year one east london hospital another year but um in your second and third year you stay in the same hospital because in my third year is the year i become a registrar which is like a more of like a senior specialty doctor role um like on night shifts for example i it means you're the most senior person physically on the ward and like if you need a consultant you need to call them to come from home so it's a really big step up and they want you to step up in a hospital where like everyone already knows you or the staff already knows you so that you're not really adjusting to people or the team or just everyone knows your competencies and capabilities so it's good on both sides so I'll be staying at my next hospital for two years but um as excited as I am for that I'm really sad to be leaving my current job because I just love my team so much like I can't tell you a single person that I will not miss at my current hospital and Everyone who is there tells me, like, I hope you come back and maybe one day you'll come back as a consultant or, like, as a senior registrar or something. And, you know, that's just the, the best thing to hear, like, that the people that you work with actually want you back as well, which then makes me even more emotional. So I've had a great, great year, but it doesn't say that it didn't come with difficulties so when I first started the job it was so hard for me because I'd never although I always knew I wanted to be an obstetrician I'd never had like a um, obs and gynae job beforehand so like the system in, in England is that once you qualify you do um, foundation jobs where you're like a really junior trainee um, and you do like four months in a rotation just to get experience in that rotation and like yeah just essentially like figure out if you want to work there or just gain more knowledge in that field which might help you in your future jobs and I never had an obs and job so when I started this job as a specialty trainee I had so much pressure on myself to just be really good at my job even though I knew absolutely nothing I, it's hard to explain when I say knew absolutely nothing obviously I know how to be a doctor but like I didn't really know how all the guidelines run for everything. I had to learn everything from scratch. I had to uh, familiarize myself with like all the most common presenting conditions and like how I would manage them and what I would do for each case and seeing patients in clinics. And I think at the start of the year, it was so hard for me. And one time actually in the office, I literally broke down in tears to six or seven of my colleagues um, who I actually love them all so much because not only did they like not not just reassure me because sometimes you know people will tell you things that you need to hear but like they they said it from the heart or they gave me their own experiences and I will forever in my life be grateful for that day where they kind of made me realize that I'm just a human and these experiences that I'm having as a trainee is something that everyone has experienced and I'm so so you know grateful that I have experienced this and got to open up to them because I know that some people might not feel safeness to open up to their colleagues about feeling insecure. I really really also felt that during my exam because um, as part of Obs and Gynae, in the first two years that you do Obs and Gynae, you have to sit um, your first exam. So there's three exams in total. The first one you sit in your first two years, the second one you sit before the end of the fifth year and the third one you sit before the end of the fifth year as well. So um, I needed to sit my first exam and I needed to do it by the end of next year but ideally like by this point so I signed up for the exam and all my other trainee colleagues who were in the same kind of year as me so first year of training were sitting the same exam and I just felt like an immense pressure to make sure that I passed this exam on first attempt and honestly like I speak so much about imposter syndrome and 
um, you know, confidence because confidence is something that I have and imposter syndrome is also something that I have and have had and something that I will always be dealing with throughout my life, I think, as, especially as a woman, I feel like we are statistically known to suffer from imposter syndrome more and I just felt this immense pressure that, like, I need to pass this exam, otherwise I'm going to look like a failure compared to my other colleagues who are sitting the exam at the same time if they pass and I don't pass. And that thought was just something that was constantly in the back of my head, which sounds really negative to say. And yeah, I feel like that's why probably I wasn't uploading as much on YouTube as well, because I was just trying to make sure that I passed this exam, which, which I'm really really grateful to say that I did. I passed the exam, I passed, the pass mark was 63% and I got 70%. And when I tell you, like, it was only when I sat the exam, you know when you sit, it's like a computerized exam, you know when you sit an exam and then you, like, throughout the whole exam I was like, oh my god, like, come on, you don't know this, you don't know this, you flopped this. And it was only when I went back afterwards through the exam, um, like at the end when you have time left over and also I finished the exam like an hour and a half early each paper so I was like oh my god come on like this can't be right um but it was only when I went back through it afterwards just to check my answers that I was like actually like I think you knew enough to pass this exam like I think you might have just pulled it off so yeah I think I had a lot of imposter syndrome around that and I had a lot of support from my colleagues and a lot of support from like my seniors and everyone telling me that you know they had no doubt in me passing and even telling me that even if I didn't it really doesn't mean anything and like loads of people won't pass on like their first attempt or whatever so overall I just felt really stressed out about that and I feel really relieved to have passed it and it's part of the reason why my sisters and I went away to Saint-Tropez again is because it's my favorite place um, not in the world, but it's my favourite place to have a very fun uh, sisterly trip or friendship, friends holiday. And we went there to kind of celebrate me passing my exam, which I'm so happy about. And before the exam, I had just before I started revising for the exam, I completed a postgraduate training uh, programme with Harvard. And that was for medical education, so training to teach medicine. Um, and that was obviously again difficult in itself and I passed that exam so I just feel like I had so much going on in the year and I really took a seat back and I was like why did I put so much on my plate this year and what was I really trying to achieve and I've realized that I a thrive way better when I have a lot going on versus when I have nothing going on when I have like just my job to go to day in day out funnily enough like I know it sounds so crazy, but like sometimes I feel like I need to be doing more. Um, and I think it's just because I know that right now I'm not married, I don't have children, so I should be using this time where I can really focus on my job to really give it my like 100. Um, but also like I'm just happier when I'm a busier person. So I feel like that's where I got like a lot of my drive from to kind of just do more. Um, the lip line I'm gonna use now, actually I'm not gonna go for this one. I'm gonna go for Refi lip liner in Fawn. So yeah, like as in, yeah, I'm overall much happier when I'm a busier person and I thrive better by keeping myself like busy and also like trying to achieve the most, but I'm trying to learn to remove the pressure of trying to be like the best always because it's really hard, you know? Like I feel like I also had this pressure where I do like social media, like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, I know that people around me and people who I work with see that as well. So I want to create content that I'm proud of and I want to make sure that that's the best. And then I want to also be really good at my job. So it's really hard, I think, sometimes trying to juggle everything. And sometimes something's got to give. And I feel like in this instance, it's been a bit with my YouTube. But I've really sat back and reflected and I realized that my YouTube is something that makes me so happy. And just coming back here to this space with you guys and sharing like so much memories and conversations with each other and just like support I get from you guys and I hope that I show you guys support when I can I feel like it's something that I'm so blessed to have that not everyone has and this community that we have together is so special that it's nothing that I would ever want to take for granted and you know not give it my 100 so so yeah I really want to ensure that I'm like uploading content on a regular basis for you guys so that you're enjoying it but I also want it to be things that you enjoy so I don't want to just be doing travel vlogs because I know that maybe you guys you love the travel vlogs but maybe not every week but sometimes it got to a point where 
in my life in my the way my job was and the way I take annual leave is like I'll take Thursday and Friday off and then I will go away Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and then come back to work and it's kind of my way of maximizing my annual leave in summer especially um, and how I can take as many trips as I can take working a full-time job is by doing loads of like short bursts um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing and that's why it's kind of ended up being loads of travel vlogs back to back, but I want to show you guys more of just my normal home life like we've been doing like in this vlog because I know that you guys enjoy that too and a lot of you guys are here for that. Um, so yeah, if you have any other kind of like suggestions of what you want to see, I'm really open to it. Some of you guys left suggestions in my last video, which I'm really grateful for. I'm going to get the question box up to answer some of you guys' questions too. One of you asked, what's the secret of your energy since you balance two different lifestyles so well? Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say, I would say before I made this whole big deal of the fact that I have two different lifestyles because I'm a doctor, but then I'm also like on YouTube and you know, I think the older I get, the more I realize I'm actually probably just an, I probably am just another normal person who happens to share their life on the internet. I'm sure if more people share their life on the internet, then you guys would see that you have so much more in common. Like I'm sure, and I hope that some of you guys who watch my videos feel like you have th things in common with me, whether that's, I don't know, the way I am with my family or the way I think out loud with you guys, how I do my makeup, cultural things, where I hang out, I don't know, fashion. So I think, yeah in terms of that probably doesn't answer your question but yeah in terms of like balancing my life and my my lifestyle I wouldn't say that the two don't go hand in hand I think they do go hand in hand very well which helps to balance it well um because I enjoy making content about my life day to day which includes my full-time job of being a doctor but I also know that it can sometimes be very consuming to be a doctor and it doesn't give me kind of the time to edit and make vlogs or um, for example when I needed to like revise for my exam I didn't necessarily have time to go out and be social with my friends and I remember one night during my like revision period I went out for some drinks with my friends but I wasn't drinking because I have an exam so I was like I won't be drinking and I was just looking around at everyone and I was like, oh my God, like it must be so nice to be an adult who doesn't have an exam and can just go out to whatever hour they want or drink as much as they want or whatever, because I feel like, yeah, I guess that's probably like one flip side of it as like being a doctor is like, you don't get to maybe do that as much. I think my idea of fun has changed so much and um, I really try and focus on myself and give myself like the best mindset that I can every day and I do that by going to the gym I do that by like listening to important people like Joe Dispenza I love listening to him Mo Gauda I love listening to him Robert Green um these are all people who kind of speak about energy and manifestation and um you know bringing things to life for yourself and I think I do that every day at least once a day I try and yeah do something for myself whether that be listening to one of those people or going to the gym or hanging out with my friends I think I just kind of do what makes me happy but ultimately prioritizing myself and um yeah that's probably where my balance comes from I'm not sure if I have it right I think that's each to their own you know everyone's kind of got different goals and different things that they want to achieve for themselves but for me like this is, you know, a happy equilibrium for me. Like I enjoy being with my family all the time. I like going to the gym. I like hanging out with my dog and my friends and their dogs. Or sometimes I love going on these like fun party holidays. Sometimes I like going on a holiday and just chilling by the beach. Um, yeah, you gotta see what makes you happy. I've like got friends who don't really enjoy traveling and they just like to kind of be in London or chilling at home and, you know that's what makes them happy and I feel like you've got to find what makes you happy and you got to do that um for me I think my balance definitely comes from working and then also coming here on YouTube and chatting with you guys and traveling 
and exercise. I think those are probably the main things that keep me sane along with my family, but my family's always there. So I don't even kind of count that in my list. Someone has said, if you could start your own business, what would it be? So um, obviously my sisters and I did aesthetics together and our aesthetics business still exists. I just don't do aesthetics anymore because I really don't have the time with training, especially if I want to kind of keep up my YouTube and everything else I just spoke to you guys about. I wouldn't have time to also be involved in the aesthetics business, which is a shame because it is something that I really love. So yeah, I think as a first business, something that I would love to do is that um, if I had the time on my plate. Um, but aside from that business that already exists, and by the way, if you guys want to book in with Dr. S Aesthetics, not to plug it, but you can book through the Instagram, the website is there for any treatments that you'd like. Um, if I wasn't kind of doing aesthetics, if I was looking at kind of a different business altogether, if that's what your question is about, I quite like tech and like AI related stuff. I think that there's a huge role for it in women's health and I'm really passionate about that. And I'm kind of trying to find ways to get into that space, um, but I'm still so, so new to it. So if any of you guys actually have any good like forums or conferences or anything you think I should attend or any articles you think I should read, please send it my way because I find kind of that space very, very interesting and would be something that I would be intrigued to do business in for sure. Someone has said, how do you deal with rocky friendships and finding your people? Um, so I think that friendships do to an extent get easier the older you get because you are more of your own person and usually the people around you your age are more of their own person too. Um, which by that I kind of mean like they're not as easily influenced by everything around you as you are when you're younger I think when I was younger as well like I was so much more influenced by what I thought would be cool or trendy rather than like what I actually enjoy um, so yeah when you're when you kind of get into like mid 20s I would say even like early 20s like 21 up you can really find your true friends because you will know if you have common ground or not by then because you will be your authentic selves um also like look out for things like who makes time for you and makes effort for you and looks out for you when you kind of go missing um because that's someone who actually cares about you and make sure that you're kind of doing the same for them um if you feel like your presence would or wouldn't wouldn't be noticed. I think that's very telling of whether you're in a good relationship or friendship or not. And the other thing is that I've realized as an adult is like, if a friendship isn't working, you just don't have to force it. Like I have friends that we've just grown apart or we're not friends anymore really. And sometimes it sucks. Um, sometimes you really miss that person. Maybe something's happened, but often like if you've just grown apart, like, you know, who knows, maybe one day in the future, you'll all come back together. Maybe you won't. It just, it is what it is, but I feel like the friends that I have around me now who I love and I love hanging out with are people who sacrifice their time for me and really care about me. And so I want to do the same for them. And I love being around them. And we have like a lot in, in common, you know? We don't have everything in common. I think like, for example, some of my friends are, you know, married and work in medicine. Some of my other friends are single and have nothing to do with the medic space, you know? But we've got, personality traits that are things in common or things that we enjoy doing in our free time and that's what we kind of bond over so you know if you have a friendship that's maybe not going too well it's okay to say goodbye to that friendship like it, you know it it doesn't not everything needs to last forever i think with friendships which i know as horrible as it sounds i think if you have a really good friendship you just know that it will last forever and if you're questioning like a rocky friendship then it's okay to let it go you know if it's if it's meant to be it'll come back to you someone said what happened to rocky your other dog um i posted about him and he died in 2021 i'm really sorry to tell you um he was 13 and a half when he died he was a chihuahua he lived a very nice long life but he had heart failure in the end and that's why Three months later, I got Banksy because I just had a very empty space in my heart where I really wanted a dog. But one thing I will say is Rocky was a Chihuahua, long hair. Banksy is a Pomeranian. Um, and I would say that Pomeranians in general are much friendlier than Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas innately are just a bit more yappy. And so it makes 
like when I go away I have so many friends who are happy to take care of Banksy for me because he's just so friendly or when I take him to the groomers like they just love him there so or anywhere I go really so it makes it much easier because when you have a yappy dog sometimes it could just be so hard because you it's really hard for you to take them anywhere and no one really wants to take care of them because like they're a bit more aggressive so I would say Pomeranians in general are a much friendlier breed and Four of my friends have Pomeranians and they're all really friendly. Two of them are called Louis. Isn't that funny? Someone said, dating advice and getting over anxiety of being alone in your late 20s as a woman. Um, okay. I think dating is kind of a huge topic that I'm going to try and boil down into something kind of short and sweet for you. First of all, late 20s, late 30s, late 40s, doesn't matter how old you are, so long as you find someone who makes you happy, I don't think there's really an age for it for you to worry. I think you should worry if you're with someone who doesn't make you happy um, or who is causing you anxiety. Because let me tell you something, like at the end of the day, I've heard this a lot from other people around me and I think it's really true and it's like I think anyone could really go out there and find a girlfriend or find a boyfriend like there's loads of people who you know would just be content in just having a partner doesn't matter if they have anything in common or if they really make each other happy or if they're really attracted to each other so you've got to make sure that you know when you find someone a you're with them for all the right reasons and b that they make you truly happy um, the pressure of being single in your late 20s, I guess, if you really feel pressure, um, whether that be from your family, I don't know where you're feeling pressure from, or personally, or you're worried about having kids, I would say go and freeze your eggs. I think it's probably something that will relieve a lot of pressure from you, knowing that you don't have a biological clock ticking over your head. Um, because the truth is, like, at the end of the day, there's no rush to meeting someone. You can't rush something that is going to be forever, you know, if that's what you want. Don't stress and don't be anxious because, you know, it's it's going to happen whether you stress or are anxious or you're chilled about it. So you might as well be chilled about it, you know, and if you're chilled about it, you'll probably be able to look around you and spot when you meet that right person. I was going to answer one last question before I go off horse riding, but then I just realised I would just quickly talk to you guys about horse riding. Loads of you have been asking me how I've been finding it and, you know, where I go riding and, you know, everything about it. So I've been riding now for, I would say, almost four or five months and I absolutely love it. I feel like just going to the stables is therapy for me. Every time I get on a horse, I'm just so much happier. Not to mention the fact that it is such a great workout and those animals are just beautiful. Like I dream of having my own house with stables in it one day and two horses. Um, so that's like definitely a goal for me. I'm not in like some sort of rush to get somewhere with my horse riding. I think in the beginning when I started, I felt like I need to hurry up and be really good so that I can start jumping and start doing this and that. But now I've just realized I'm literally just going for my peace of mind and enjoying myself and it's been incredible. Um, I ride at the LEC, um, but there's so many great riding schools in and around London. So just find which one works for you. But I really just got into a because the stables was so close to my house and it was something that I'd always wanted to do and I had some friends who were doing it and I was like why am I not doing it when I literally have a stable that is one minute from my house so yeah that's how I got into it and that's why I love it. I hope that I answered some of your questions in this about what I've been up to but yeah that's essentially it and let's get to my horse riding lesson before I'm late. And that's it. So after C, sit down and kick. Oh, we're in it, good. Push your right hand forwards. There, that was good. Good, sit down here and go. Little kicks. Right hand forwards, lean back, sit into it, swing along. Good, lean back, that's it. Yeah, that was good. This probably doesn't look very appetizing, but Sol's made this really nice like cucumber here's a miso spicy salad thing and this other noodle thing so we're just eating that together guys i love bob's burgers you weren't even going to be watching bob's burgers guys our latest obsession is 
Rick and Morty. Mm. Like, I'm obsessed. I love it so much. And... I really like the humour. It's very dark. Adult. Adult, but very funny. So, if you guys are looking for, like... If you like an animation... Is that what it's called? Hmm. Because it's not anime. I know anime is something different, but it's animation, right? Like, cartoons, essentially. Yeah. If you like cartoons... It's very clever. It's too clever. Episode 3, season 1, episode 3, Anatomy Park. As a doctor, I thought that was really clever and funny. So, yeah, give it a little watchy-watch. I look so rough, guys. I found on some stuff, it would literally take me a second to like, to, like, oh, catch up and be like, oh, wow, that was so clever. I'm like, who's writing this stuff? Because it's actually so clever. Like, they must have scientists involved because there's, like, space stuff involved in it. So I'm on my first of four nights and it is definitely busy to say the least. We've had um, one kiwi delivery, we've had to go to theatres for a routine presenter. I've just come back from theatres for a surgical management of a miscarriage. So the labor ward doesn't look too busy. As the kind of junior, you have to float between gynecology duties and obstetric duties but in the day there is obviously so much more cover so everyone can cover different things and as a registrar you only do obstetrics or gynecology which also covers the triage in my hospital so yeah those are different responsibilities and hopefully we can have a bit of a sit down it's almost, I think, 2 a.m. So it is 3... It's 3.30 3 p.m. after my first night shift. And last night was quite busy, but we did manage to get a break and some rest from about 3 a.m. till 6 a.m. And then at 6 a.m. we had another delivery um, that was needing some assistance. So, um, yeah, I was back up and running again from 6. And then I got home about 9 a.m. and went to sleep and I woke up at about 2.30. So I've had five and a half hours sleep. I'm not feeling tired now. I did manage to rest during my night shift, like I said, for three hours. So altogether, I feel fine. I am really hungry though. So I'm gonna go to Waitrose just to do some shopping. I have like a little list of things that I'm really hungry and craving for, which is such a bad idea because everyone says never go shopping on an empty stomach. And that is exactly what I'm about to do. My outfit of the day is kind of cute, let me show you. I'm wearing a black t-shirt, black trousers, and these Empire sandals, I think they're called from Hermes, which I've said this, I've said this before in my vlogs, but I really don't recommend those sandals. They are so painful. Um, so don't buy them and forgive like the just woken up look and my hair is like in this weird clip situation because it's not right now it's a problem is the answer i'm hoping to have lunch edit this vlog and then go to the gym i don't know if i'll manage to do all of those oh and i also wanted to clean my room but i've literally got four hours to do all of this and relax a bit so i don't know if i'll manage to do all of that um but we'll see if i don't get any exercise in today i do have a horse riding lesson tomorrow so it will be okay and i won't be too mad at myself because i am literally on nights um but yeah i think my main priority probably should be cleaning up my room making myself some food and relaxing and editing this vlog so that is exactly what i'm gonna do let's go to waitrose Guys, I literally promised myself I would be productive this night shift when I'm not doing anything. And all I've done when I'm not doing anything is fall asleep, which 
you can tell from the state of my lip liner although i think that's probably from when i went for cesarean section um i did a cesarean section start to finish in 38 minutes um that was at 9 p.m it's currently almost 5 a.m um but that was really good from my side i think it was quite smooth and my registrar said it was smooth so i'm very happy with that funnily enough like with us and our operations we actually need to be able to do them quite quickly especially when it comes to getting baby out um and that is just in terms of the urgency of it obviously i'm talking about cesareans um and uh also with like assisted deliveries like um kiwis and forceps but that i need more practice with for sure um but with my cesareans there is obviously a when I'm a registrar in about one year and one month, um, I will need to be very fluent and quick with it. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, but yeah, it's been so busy tonight, but there was just like a one hour break where there was nothing to do from the obstetric or the gynae side. So I literally fell asleep and I just, I look really rough, oh well gonna make a tea now and continue with my night shifts.